And action. And welcome, everybody. This is BMP Weekly, episode 250. Uh, it is 21st of May. Uh, it is the day of build 2024, which is interesting. In the BMP Weekly, I always talk about the latest Microsoft 365 and related technologies. Um, and we typically have a visitor and articles. This time, however, no articles. Uh, I think we've been missing articles now two weeks in a row or something like that is because it? of the, the scheduling and all yeah. of that's been complicated. It's a conference season. Everybody's on the road. Everybody's preparing. It's chaos. It's holidays. It's just everything's <laughs> getting in the way. So yes. I think next week, there is nothing in a way, so there will be no more excuses for us not to have the articles. And I think next week we will have a ton of share, right? Because like it, it's, it's, it's going to be all the build announcements, which starts actually today. Um, and I think there's going to be a ton of news around that. So we will definitely be back strong with a lot of articles. Sure. What was interesting, by the way, as we're recording this, yesterday already they uh, announced the new uh, PCs and their PCs of the, the Windows AI event. Correct. That. Yeah, so it's actually interesting how they're bundled on this uh, on the same week. Uh, they're kind of related, but not really. But anyway, so. Uh, but looking forward, there's really, really cool stuff. I yesterday had a look on, before we go to the interview of today, I yesterday had a look on or participated also on the Teams MVP NDA uh, thing. So obviously knew already what's coming out, but it's just interesting to see how MVPs were reacting on the on the news and what's coming out. And a lot of cool videos, actually. What Definitely, yes. And I mean, like, so I am a long time uh, Mac Mac user, but the one thing that really captured my attention is re, re, recall. So a function yep. in the OS, right, that, that basically helps you to find things back, things that you've done that you've seen. That's really intriguing. If there's one thing that I'd like to be able to do, do more easily is that like, I know I've seen something somewhere. You mean search? Well, it's more than that. It's more than that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, being able to tie a knot. No, no, absolutely. Like, oh yeah, to remind, like, what was it for? Exactly that. So yeah. it's really in interesting to see like how that will actually play out in practice. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely. It's going to be interesting to see how end users are adapting all of these new capabilities, which will be the interesting challenge. So where's when we introduce something like recall or something else, which is like, or even the co-pilot. Now, uh, anyway, so uh, let's jump on the interview of today uh, because we can continue that discussion over there as well. Correct. So our we have a guest. We have yes. a guest. Today, our guest is Mr. Paul Kaisers, who... I don't know if I think he's still Dutch, but nowadays he lives in Portugal. So with that, welcome, Paul. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. Almost. Here. Almost. Almost. Ah. Smooth. It was almost flawless. Yes. yes. Still need to practice. Five out of ten. Wouldn't recommend. <laughs> Thanks for the welcome, Paul, welcome. on the show. Yeah, yeah, thank thanks you. for the warm welcome. <laughs> yeah, uh, all the way of, out of Portugal, yes. I moved in uh, January 2023 to Portugal from Amsterdam. So that's a big change. Uh, it is, it is. And I can imagine it's a different, I think it's different everything. Like I think Portuguese are different than Dutch. Uh, the weather is different. Everything is different. So like what was, like what drove you to move? If you can share that. <laughs> Uh, yes, of course. There are several things that, that move me. Uh, of course, weather is one of them, but it's not not really the most important thing because we still work behind the computers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whenever yeah. you go outside, yes, that's, that's true. But mainly, uh, I had the feeling in Amsterdam we were in a rat race and mm -hmm. we were just pacing, pacing and more and more. And here the pace is really a bit slow, um, but that is like when you work, uh, you are still a bit in the red race, but after work, it feels like vacation time. Wow. Yep. And that's a good way to uh, de-stress. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think we are, we are heading to an age, I guess it's a fair to say, where you start rethinking the values and what happens outside of the work. And you don't need to go clapping, except Waldeck, who goes clapping every single time. No, just kidding. No, but it's, it's interesting. The pacing is actually interesting because I remember vividly many, many moons ago, uh, a discussion with one of my old colleagues where he moved from Helsinki capital area to a smaller city in the West Coast in Finland for the exact same reasons. And, and the speed of people walking and and just the speed of people just walking on the street is different because the pace is lower and there's mm. no rush so 
what 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 what, what drove you to Portugal? Not why why didn't you move to you know a small village in Netherlands? Or France, <laughs> or Italy, or Spain. <laughs> yes. There's so many, you know, places to choose from. Or like, Finland. Wow, all the way, all the way to the coast. <laughs> like, if I'm going, like, you just drove and didn't stop. Oh, the way from, the from Europe, exactly. <laughs> as far as I can get. <laughs> well, um, next to that, I do a lot of surfing, uh, which is great in Portugal. Yep. Um, we, we were here, and the people are so friendly. I know Waldeck, you may know that from the Netherlands, that we have Netherlands and Belgium, and there's already a major difference. Mm -hmm. um, and you could say the same for uh, Portugal and Spain. So Portugal is the Belgium of uh, of Spain and uh, Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's much nicer. Uh, the people are... Uh, not loud the spanish tend to uh, be loud which is perfectly fine but i like a bit more <laughs> done and yeah. um they are so friendly it's everybody wants to help and that's really nice so that's yeah cool. i think that's that's also a big part to move here uh, especially of course the surf because uh, i like yeah. to surf a lot <laughs> yeah what about what about the language? Like I can imagine. So when I moved from Poland, 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 Poland to uh, and and uh, the Netherlands, it wasn't like I had to learn the language. But there are so many, you know, small things. What are cooler conversation? Going to the shops, going to the market, where you miss out. How is that in Portugal? Like, do you need to learn Portuguese to really be a part of the community, or like, do you get away with with English? Well, at the moment, I get away with English, but <laughs> um, I want to learn Portuguese because when you move to another country, I think you need to learn the language. It's yeah. it's something that makes you uh, at least do your effort. Right. Um, but I'm in the south of uh, Portugal, in the Algarve, and here everybody speaks English. And okay. The major problem is you start a conversation in Portuguese and they start talking back English because they know it's hard for you. Oh, okay. so that's <laughs> really... Yeah. And I think it's similar for you, Waldeck, at the time you came to Holland, uh, that people started talking English or not. I don't recall it, to be honest. I think really the biggest uh, block was like, for a long time, you don't know enough, right? So you start a sentence, you get an answer back in Dutch, and you're like, oh my God, I have no idea what you just said to me. And then you can uh, switch, <laughs> switch to uh, English. And then it's something like, but there's no really no other way around it. It's just like kind of embrace the suck. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah. You got to you gotta put yourself through it. And then there are some, you know, stupid things like you will, you will say, like in Dutch, there's like, it's just a difference of one sound between the beach and shit. I was like, yeah, let's go to shit. I was like, oh, you mean the beach? Yes. I didn't say that. No. So <laughs> things like that, you just like, well, yeah, these are the mistakes you will do, you know, and um, there's no, no other way around it. Just have a laugh and, and enjoy. And eventually like you will get better eventually. It just takes time. Right. So it's just basically the effort you have to put, put in, but there's no other way around it. Exactly. Exactly. And I guess yeah. in Finnish, that period of time where you suck is going to be way longer. Hey, that's going to be a, yeah, it's a, <laughs> yes, uh, it's a bit of a difficult language. So, yes, uh, not all <laughs> languages are alike, right? So, yes. <laughs> and I think also with the age, it's getting harder because we have, uh, I have a little daughter. Uh, she is now two. So, she uh, was nine months when we went to Portugal. She speaks, uh, or at least words, uh, let's say that way, Portuguese, English, and Dutch. Mm. So yeah. that's really like some words she, she pronounces way better than we do. Oh, yeah. yeah, the accent. Yes, yes. That is also another thing, right? Because like basically the sounds like form in your mouth and the muscles are getting accustomed to, to, to the sounds. Yeah, it takes deliberate effort not to sound Dutch in another language. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> now, now uh, we jumped immediately on the Portugal discussion and uh, the the surfing discussion because apparently there's some sort of a sea right next to Portugal. I don't know about the geography, <laughs> no. but uh, but That's can you enough. do Paul a quick kind of recap on the intros and what do you what do you actually do for Ling and what is your background? Uh, how do you you know what happened before you moved to Portugal and what do you do nowadays uh, on a day to day basis? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can do a quick intro. Uh, I started uh, in uh, with SharePoint in 2001, so uh, one of the old uh, yeah, old ones around the block. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I went a little bit away, and back in 2007, I fully focused on SharePoint. Uh, went to the Bay Boss uh, 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 time and then off to Office 365. So I also had all the SharePoint versions. Uh, from 2017, when I became uh, MVP, I uh, started to do more and more teams. Uh, and what I see now is that I'm moving a bit back to uh, SharePoint again, um, because I see there's a lot of requests on there. Um, I run my own company uh, since 2007. It's called KB Works. Um, and uh, that I do together with my girlfriend, Debbie. Uh, she, uh, she helps me on the strategic uh, side of business. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's in a nutshell what I, uh, what I do and where, where I came from, yes. Now, uh, how does the nowadays the work look like? So, uh, given the technology what we have and using doing work remotely is a norm. So, does the movement to protocol is it limiting anything, or was it like, well, it wasn't that hard? I must say it wasn't that hard. I was already since two thousand eighteen. Doing... I'm writing some notes. <laughs> <laughs> I would do that as well. <laughs> yeah, since, please since... continue. <laughs> Since 2018, I was already doing a lot of work remotely from yeah. our office in uh, Halfweg, Amsterdam at that moment. Uh, but um, now it's fully remote. And that's a change in way of thinking. Because when you are in Amsterdam, you still think, okay, I can go to that client. I will be there in one hour. But now it's a little bit different. Because if you have to go to a client, it's it's a for our flight and uh, two hours on the air, uh, airport uh, strolling around. So that's a, that's a big uh, difference. But I must say since 2018, there's never been a moment that you really had to go to the client. Now I see there are some things changing lately uh, in we had the pandemic and I think that was a, a thing that everybody went uh, on the remote thing, but now we see at least what I hear back from the Netherlands is that people want to have more people back in the office. So I think there will be a hybrid uh, uh, situation, but for me at the moment uh, with the remote work, it's still fine. And um, I don't see a, a, a option to go back uh, to the office. I would say uh, when uh, I'm on a job and they request me like once a month, that's fine because I think it's still valuable to have yep. this face to face um, uh, discussions. And I think, uh, Vesa, for you, uh, you are on the headquarters, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yep. Yep. Definitely, uh, but it's also uh, it, it is like you said, it's it's definitely possible. But having that human and in person connection every now and then helps because then you know the person on that side because regardless of we trying to be let's say transparent and honest and without roles we do have a role because or we we do have only one side of our lives which we expose through the the, the video camera and then having that in-person you know reaction on in-person connection helps to realize that oh Waldeck is such a brilliant guy actually in the real world why does he not <laughs> so that, that, is, that is an interesting point and and i wonder if uh any of you ever done that like a while back i have this a colleague of of mine who is in canada and like we've never had a chance to meet in person we grab beers on teams yep basically to bond uh, right to kind of uh, to, to have this other non-work science as i do it but that was a deliberate effort because otherwise like we wouldn't 
have met yet like we wouldn't be able to to bond and to kind of build the, the relationship that way right so that was a deliberate effort for it on our part it's like you know uh um like by uh, beyond the working time at least for me and with a little bit of bit of adjustment for for him but we basically did that right to kind of to have that thing so i wonder have you ever tried that to kind of like break the walls or like no no no, no like the building the relationship doesn't belong on, on virtual and you got to do that in person. Well, I haven't done it like that, but uh, there's one thing I didn't tell you yet. Uh, we bought a camper because now I'm in those uh, nice Portugal uh, houses with uh, brown uh, furniture. Uh, that's typical Portuguese. Um, and um, we bought a camper van and I'm going to the... Uh, nicest beaches i'm going to work from there uh -huh. uh, uh tomorrow i get solar panels on the roof of the camper van so i can work on my mac and um uh i have everywhere i have power but i also have a nice view so right uh, then you got the whole combination and i think it's good for some people to watch my background because it's real <laughs> yeah you may I don't know if be able good. to like sit <laughs> so. you put your feet, feet feet up and you skew like the screen just a little bit so that they can yeah. just see like a portion of you so that that you you are there and beyond that like just the noise of the sea and the beach and the endless you know yes, expanse exactly. of the uh, yeah. uh the sea yeah <laughs> exactly some some things like that maybe you you know i'm also doing a lot of videos so maybe i'm going to do them from the beach as well uh at least if it's not windy then it will work uh so yep. we have to check that <laughs> yeah yeah totally totally <laughs> <laughs> but coming coming a bit back on the on the in-person versus virtual so one of the examples for example with Baldek, um i think we've been having some of the meetings within our calendar for what six years already and with Waldek, i think at least i'm quickly calculating i have six non really productive meetings within a week uh with different people um and that's really to have that relaxed yeah. discussion and and you know that association with people without the requirement of executing so it's more on there is no agenda to it right you basically yes, exactly. and some sometimes something come out of it and sometimes not like yeah. there is no immediate and sometimes some people yeah. can join sometimes people are busy and it's completely yeah. fine but it, it's it's also i think in the especially in this remote way of working i think we we shouldn't be only having meetings which are just to execute because again then the, it's it's going to be stressful for sure. It comes to be stressful even as a remote work. In that yeah, case. and I, and, I think, and 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 I think that's really like a difference that I see, right? Because like I was also a part of that where I worked in the office, like even full time. Uh, and I think that the main difference that many folks under estimate is that in a past where you would bond, it would be you know the serendipitous thing, like you go to a water cooler or you have a lunch. It exactly. was just there. Well, now it's got to be a deliberate thing. And, it's, and it sounds weird, but you got to have a deliberate meeting to bond, to have that serendipitous thing. It doesn't, sure. it's not going to happen by itself because it is um, um, a vir virtual thing, right? So you need to carve out time deliberately to talk about the non-work and, and other things that otherwise it would just be there. Yep. Right. So that's, I think, is a difference. That, that's something that isn't intuitive because I wouldn't be, but that's something that, that you really need to take into account for the, uh, the relations to, to work uh, um, uh, in virtual. Absolutely. I, I know that in the, in the pandemic uh, time, some companies had channels in Teams open uh, that were just open to drop in and uh, talk to everybody who was online at the time uh, yep. to get a bit of those commute uh, things. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But then we already, what pandemic? What was that? <laughs> exactly. <No. laughs> it's been 84 years. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, exactly. Anyway, we we we'll... talk about the P, P, P word here. Yes, let's uh, talk Paul. about it. Paul, you mentioned, you mentioned, right, that, that originally you, like your first experience with the uh, Let's say SharePoint M365, O365 world was with SharePoint in 2001. Then you left, came back. 
Uh, at some point, you verge into teams, but now you're going back because there's a lot of interest and demand. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What kind of interest you're seeing? Well, I still see a lot of uh, PMP requests. So the search, uh, uh, for example, a lot of companies want that, but also on the provisioning side. Uh, there's still a request on provisioning uh, with PMP, and um, I I hear a lot of companies that are struggling with it still. Um, and uh, for example, I was working for a company that still had that just provisioned their SharePoint site, but they did their home site, for example, in a classic team site and uh, the root site. So uh, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> exactly. So, if you don't know, you don't know. That's why you need act, um, um, experts to tell you otherwise, right? Sure. Exactly. Exactly. So I that's what I hear a lot and see a lot. And uh, with Teams, it's more like there's a new feature coming and it's really nice. But I think in the SharePoint space, there's much more technical knowledge needed uh, to, uh, to get it uh to get it working correctly and and i think that's that's something that people uh tend to forget or not using the full uh the product to the fullest yeah. and now we see that changing it again so uh before it was teams 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 and now it's more back to sharepoint yes i think that is it fair to say, I'm just speculating completely here, um, but the Teams, Teams, Teams obviously is 100% understandable. And then we we kind of uh, onboarded most of the, the customers already on Teams and people are kind of used to do video recordings and meetings and all of that in Teams. And then we started again thinking on, okay, we've done this, now collaboration happens in Teams. Now we need to start again focusing on content, cor cor com company, uh, company cor corporations, com Wow, corporate communication. Corporate communication. <laughs> corporate communication, wow. corporate communication. <laughs> now, um, but it's 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 more on focusing again on the content and and also because of the copilot and AI focus more on okay, so we have these files anyway in SharePoint. So how are we going to now surface that? Is that a thinking journey yes. on the? Okay, cool. Absolutely, and I think the copilot thing uh, i know Mart martina Grom. Uh, she mentioned it uh, really correctly we had the same thing with uh, delph uh, when delph came out everybody was like okay and now we have to turn off delph and <laughs> now with copa it, it's a different story they have yeah. to have those governance good, uh, in place because else they uh, they are lost <laughs> yeah. yeah i think that's I think it's a it's a new driver for SharePoint as well. Yep, definitely, definitely. And and we're gonna release something incredibly cool today, or we're gonna talk about it and a few videos in build, which we're recording this and we're releasing this before the build keynote. So I can't actually really <laughs> not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> well, I don't know which keynote or which session it will be shared, but it, it's gonna be yeah. It's re re really the power of again the focus on SharePoint is is gonna be super visible in build um, because all of our content is in SharePoint, regardless of is it dropped there using Teams or OneDrive or whatever. It's still in the same bubble and and at the, the storage. So. It's going to be interesting to see. So, I wonder, SharePoint is back. It wonder, never went away. I, I, I wanted to what extent it's it's in a way like a pyramid of needs where, you know, like the way we work will change um, over time, right? Like a uh, um, few 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 years back, we got Teams, and with that, all the the there was a demand for asynchronous work, working re remotely, and with that, like that need become more more urgent and hence we focus more on adopting teams and how to make use of all of that now that yep. that is in place we kind of get back to okay. okay how can we improve that well majority of that will come back to um how we can organize the content that that we create in our work and share that with others and bring others along and that really comes back to uh the ia right so how we organize the inform formation uh in our work and that yep. is SharePoint. That is content types. That is, you know, pages and all that. So, so I think it it it's really like a pendulum swing in a way, but also yep. how the needs evolve yep. over time and how we at some point, you know, we covered the most urgent thing and then we kind of fall back to the basic things that really drive everything uh, that is on top of it. Yeah, I agree fully on that. And 
uh, one thing I think that is really important and lots of people forget that, that's FIFA connections. Why is that important? <laughs> I think that's the glue between SharePoint and Teams. Uh, hey. but... <laughs> <laughs> Why is that part of <laughs> Why? Why is it the glue? Well, what I see is that people are starting their work off in Teams, but they miss the communication of their intranet, uh, the direct connection to SharePoint. And what I like about connection uh, connections is, um, and then I'm talking in first place about just the visual side. Uh, that you have this uh, connections button with your own logo uh, in uh, in Teams, but that goes through to uh, to the mobile version. So you don't have to step out uh, to another uh, application again uh, to view your internet. And yeah. a lot of people f don't know that uh, they forget it, uh, and it's such a little step but it's a major impact for the whole company. And I think that's something people tend to forget. And then next to it are, of course, the adaptive cards in connections, which make it really nice looking and easy to, to scroll. So I think that's one of the, uh, the products that um, a lot of people underestimate. Yeah. So maybe maybe with that because that brings me to an idea or rather a question. How much of these you know unsurmountable challenges do you come across where people are like, oh, we have this thing and we cannot solve it, and you're like, hmm, that's interesting. Have you thought of X, Y, and Z, which is available out of the box? And people are like, no, we didn't. How many of these do you do you see? And 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 do you see like typical things that many of the customers with whom you work uh, str str struggle with? Yes, uh, what I uh, the FIFA connections is definitely the f the number one, <laughs> but uh, uh, I think uh, also like the what they built is an intranet, but they don't build it on the root side. Mm -hmm. So that's also something. If they put it on the root side, make it a home side, it has those advantages, and, and that's another one that a lot of people or companies uh, forget and sometimes I know some large banking companies they even have their internet or they redirect their root site to an intranet uh, <laughs> that kind of stuff is happening still and slash I think site it, slash important um, slash intranet <laughs> <laughs> slash v2 um, yes <laughs> final 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 now Paul uh, coming back on this uh, so and, and that's I, I we talked about now on the teams and SharePoint, but uh, and and you're seeing this transition. Is it truly that customers are now more looking on the from your perspective, from areas where you're working on more in is uh, more looking into investing than on SharePoint and portals and corporate communications, employee experiences, rather than extending teams, or is it a combination of things, or how do you see the demand? I think it's a, definitely a combination of things. Uh, but uh, what I see is that they started with teams and uh, I, that's another one I still see is that they uh, had a file share and they just copied and pasted it into SharePoint in one document library. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. It still happens <laughs> a lot, <laughs> yes. A lot, so that's, an, that's another one I see a lot. And yeah. um, so they start with teams and that's for their meetings and it's working. Uh, but then they need to say, okay, if we build out uh, uh, our chats, we are doing our chats. Oh, but by the way, it should be a channel. Uh, that kind of stuff is still happening. Yep. Um, uh, so there's still a learning going on there. It's it's more on the governance side and on the adoption side. Um, and after that step, they want to go to SharePoint and to make use of the intranet. The yeah. next step is document management, uh, what I see uh, yeah. happening a lot. Yeah, It's the maturity levels of the customers and then that drives and uh, the, the usage, of course. And then it is when I think about features like SharePoint Premium, definitely a suitable, awesome, absolutely brilliant AI-powered features of some of the customers. But you need to have a certain 
maturity level to be able to understand that now you can do automatic tagging or metadata yeah, because absolutely if the files are in document library um, that's and that's one way and, of doing that <laughs> and one other thing that companies are that's the next level again is the the labeling and dlp which they forget as well yeah and even what big is companies. labeling and dlp why would you care in like 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 elevator pitch <laughs> elevator pitch well i think especially i use it a lot around the teams uh, uh used it a lot because what you want is that some communication uh, documents you don't want to get, get out of the company so you make a label internal and make it um, impossible to share it outside of the company that's a little label uh, but of course you always have to look what is needed for the company what is legal requesting and there is a fine line between legal and what's uh, what you want your uh, customers, your end users uh, to have uh, go through. Because if you make like 10 labels, which label is what? From a legal important, perspective. Super, important, super, super yeah. highly important. Very important. Yes. Uh, my very, the my most important. important. Very, very. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> top, top secret. <laughs> exactly. I'm doing, I'm actually doing a session uh, or a YouTube series with uh, Rene Flieger uh, at the moment. Uh, about purview and the sensitivity labels just from yeah. basic standards so some most of the people will start and know okay i can do this uh so that's uh, to what extent to what extent would you say that that is kind of like the need for uh, uh the, the labels and dlp is kind of inevitable as you grow because like when you start with a company of five everybody kind of knows true what is kind of the right thing to do and everybody knows that but as you grow you get more people on board you know, they only have like you carve out for them a task, a part of of the job, and it's it's no longer that everybody is involved in everything. And while everybody's doing the work, following the best intentions, it's inevitable that somebody might you know not do the right thing and overshare or do something that wasn't meant to. And with labeling and DLP, you kind of put the rail guards, helping people do the right thing. Is that is that the way to see see it? Absolutely, absolutely. And you, well, you don't be surprised, but most people will be surprised that even big corporates don't have it in place yet. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. And I think one of the great examples, I think, while well, like you, you're getting this as well, that because we we work on a one few sites and all of the files, and then if the site has a higher confidentiality level than the document. Then we get actually messages and conflicting messages and you need to start rethinking on hey wait a minute so you're putting this file which is confidential to a public corporate wide public uh, site this is not okay and then it basically starts guiding us through the the journey which is actually a great way of doing that it's yeah. it's a bit of a pain in the you know um but uh it's also like okay so that's a great reminder we need to either need to increase the confidentiality confidentiality level of the site or lower the move confidentiality the level or, of move, or move, move it in another location place. yeah but yeah. it's a really great example of that you know the the logistics and automation behind of the scenes making sure that we don't actually accidentally share files yeah. and so, i guess it's yeah. also a great great example of it empowering employees as opposed to yes. being you know the guard like like uh the department of of no yeah don't do that don't do that well yeah. I, okay i'll put it in you know no you cannot then. save save it fine like, yes but, <laughs> but that's also with the inheritance uh, when you use copilot for a new document exactly. based on that confidential yeah. So it's it's um, way way more brighter than just one file. Yeah. It's yeah. It's yeah. through the whole company. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That I I think yeah. Copilot is for sure the great reminder for everybody that they need to understand the governance. And even in last week in Wiesbaden in the ECS, we could see half of the the expo being basically governance ISVs um, offers. <laughs> so in which is understandable. A or two because. <laughs> I'm conscious about the time. Why is it yes. important? Why is it important for everybody? Why is now the right time, if they they haven't done it yet, to kind of revisit the governance plans that they have the labeling in the era of AI? Well, I think that's uh, when AI surfaces everything you didn't do. So 
uh, especially uh, around oversharing. I think that's that's something that is major uh, impact on the company. Uh, so I think with Copilot coming uh, and or having Copilot, the governance is essential to review. It's by the way. Uh, Governance is is uh, alive, so it's it's never stopping. Uh, uh, you always have to re rethink uh, the whole process every step uh, there is, and that's yeah. something uh, uh, I'm also busy with at the moment. I'm uh, busy with um, uh, an update service, and um, that gives uh, managers uh, the and product owners the overview from what is new because. A lot of people don't even know what's new, and especially when it's a big uh, company, there's only one who's uh, watching the message center. And, and it's uh, you. Uh, oh, no. well, <laughs> in, in this case, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's that's something that is uh, there. There are like fifty updates a week. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's definitely we need to or companies need to invest or hire somebody to do that or use consultants to keep them up to date. Now, from a timing perspective, we have three minutes before we need to close because of, of the co other commitments uh, and we need to wait for the recording to upload. Um, now, what's happening this week? That's a typical question build. what we're going through in here. Um, Waldeck, Waldeck is basically built, 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 um, but that's <laughs> a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So, and that's pretty much it for you, Waldeck. Well, right. no, so if anything else, I'm interested. I'm interested uh, in what we're going to share for one and two. What will be the reactions to it? So, yes. so I'm interested in that, and and I will try to follow some of some of the recordings. Um, other than that, we have some really cool improvements and some things to talk about for Dev Pro and Proxy too. So definitely stay tuned about that. I don't know if we'll announce them um this week already or the coming weeks but if anything else pay attention because there will be a few things here and there across build where you will see dev proxy so definitely stay tuned because it's really really cool yep that's really cool what about you paul anything interesting on this week what how does your week look like <laughs> this week is uh, kind of special because uh, i get the solar panels from my caravan <laughs> But normally a week is uh, like a lot on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, so yeah. I do a lot of postings on LinkedIn. Uh, I create videos and I work for customers uh, during the daytime. Um, so yeah, it's it's a very interesting week. And this week is uh, all about SharePoint. And uh, I ha after this meeting, I have a meeting with uh, guys from SharePoint and uh, to combine it with, or at least, Create a sync to uh, Salesforce or the other way around. Cool, cool, nice, yeah. cool. cool. That's really cool. And on my t my side, I'm catching up on things because I've been on a conference uh, mess uh, within the last weeks. But a lot of videos actually coming out on on new features and capabilities. And of course, build is a really really cool thing uh, to watch on this. Um, this really really cool stuff over there. So, which we'll be sharing in the community calls within upcoming weeks for sure. But I guess that's it uh, from a timing perspective. We need to start closing up. Thank you, Paul, uh, for joining on the PMP Weekly. Really cool to have you on a show. Uh, we'll get you invited back in, I would estimate, what, what would be roughly to estimate 450 episodes. <laughs> 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 but we want to actually invite people back always and talk about how, how the journey has gone. And, and I guess there's a lot of people who are jealous about your transitioning from Amsterdam to, to Portugal. That's pretty cool. So Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh... I really appreciate it. Thank you, Absolutely. Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. See ya. All right. See ya.